Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel and yes it's another chopping board video but in this one I decided to go out and buy a couple of different exotic woods the one in the middle there and the one on the right the one on the right is rosewood the one in the middle is panga panga but the one on the left was wenge and panga panga has a very similar green pattern to wenge however the darkness or the color of wenge is very very dark once uh, you've kind of put mineral oil on um, where panga panga you get a kind of a chocolate brown color so I, I decided yet yeah, this this could be a nice color to add to a chopping board now I have to tell you this chopping board ended up causing me one massive headache um, I nearly threw it in a bin to be honest with you um, but you'll see all the issues I had and it was everything from glue up issues to everything to be honest with you you'll see <laughs> so it starts out fine um, I'm just sanding down some of the strips because they've got like saw marks on them from the circular saw and stuff um, but once I was happy they were nice and they would end up gap free I do the glue up my first glue up and like any normal glue up um, I do put pl plenty of glue on because uh, I just want to make sure that the uh, the pieces uh, glue together nicely um, but I think maybe this particular time I didn't and this will be demonstrated what can happen in this video if you don't put enough glue on your pieces as you can see there's a lot of glue on this um, from the glue up uh, so it took quite a bit of time to clean this up before putting it through the planer oh look my hoover's now a snow machine anyway fixed that issue and uh, popped it through the uh, planer to flatten one side it's looking rather good oh except my planer took a chunk out of the wood and that was the rosewood just checking it to make sure it is actually square but now I've got to take more material off in order to deal with that chunk that's been taken out so yeah once the uh, the underside is flat and square then I just popped it through the thicknesser to uh, flatten it off so it's nice and square both sides so here I'm just doing the second glue up because the board is uh, quite wide it's too wide for my uh, planer um, I have had since making this part of the video I've now since made a um, router jig so I can actually route the top of these instead of uh, doing two glue ups for wider boards um, so once I cleaned up the glue and that was all ready it was just a matter of now cutting this into strips so far so good right well somewhere along the line I managed to cut one of these that it wasn't a square cut it was slightly off which meant I ended up with a piece which was um, thinner than the other bits and you'll see this in a little while Oh, very important number up your pieces uh, if you mix them up drop them move them get them <laughs> it's a nightmare to try and figure out which piece goes where so here you'll see I'm just now checking the grain pattern um, just making sure I'm happy that they all line up uh, which they do they line up quite nicely uh, which means I've cut this actually a lot better and you can see actually it's looking pretty nice I quite like this pattern um, similar pattern to the other chopping board I did it's pretty much the identical way but the woods really makes a difference and that's the piece there you can see it's got a little lip now that's a problem this is where all my problems started so I had to put this through the planer again these pieces because um, that one piece was too small the planer broke this piece off at the panga panga and then it broke another piece and it also chewed the hell out of that other little piece so now i've <laughs> got a chopping board that's falling apart so i thought okay let's clue clean the glue up and re-glue these and it's at this point i checked it the internet to make sure this wood is actually good for gluing up but you can see now it's getting worse i, I ended up with four pieces falling apart all the glue between the panga panga and um the paduk so the problem you've got here is to try and glue these back on absolutely perfect as they were 
is nigh on impossible, which means this little piece now is going to be slightly out, causing that piece to be slightly out um, of square. But I had to fix it, I had to do something with it, but there you see four pieces. And then once they glued up, testing the strength to make sure the glue joint is good. So at this point, I'm thinking it was me, not the wood. Um, maybe my first glue up joint wasn't very good, uh, but now it seems pretty strong. So there's the four pieces, and the next day, oh, another piece. So I had five pieces, so I had to re glue this piece up. Then I had to re flatten these all back so they were completely square. But then it took a chunk out the end of it. So now I've got chunks missing. But I thought, I've got to get these through the planer. I've, I've got no other option to get them nice and square. So there we go. It's not a big issue. I can just chop a little bit off the edges. I'm going to be rounding these over anyway, these edges. And I just need to shave off a few millimetres. However, I still had two sides of this which wasn't square and I needed to put these through the thicknesser to get them square, which meant end grain going through a planer. But what's the worst that can happen with that, eh? I mean, you know, take a smidgen off each time, just a 0.2 of a millimetre or something, just take it easy and everything should work out pretty good. So I did that. Oh my word, what's going on now? It looks like my dog's been chewing my board. Oh my God, yeah, that's what happens. It's called tear out. <laughs> but don't worry, it's okay. Because I was thinking to myself, when I've got one lot of tear out, I thought, you know what, I might as well put the rest of them through because I've got to cut these to width anyway and chop a bit off. So a little bit of a waste of material. The chopping board's a little bit thinner than I originally planned, but it's still going to be a good chopping board. So now it's the second glue up, and uh, this time I got the pieces a lot straighter than the uh, the last cutting board I did. Um, so I'm a lot happier with the way this one turned out in the end, and the pattern's looking great. I think personally, the the woods you can see there's four lots of rosewood, two lots of panga panga in there, and uh, what else am I using? I'm using maple for the white, and um, Paduke, um, a couple of strips of that, and I think it was walnut strips as well in there. So now it, we're, you know, we're getting to the final stages of, of the cutting board. It's now just a matter of uh, shaving the sides off. Did this very carefully. Really didn't want anything bad to go wrong now. So uh, I was trying to be super careful. Uh, so I took the sides off. So I discovered that the chopping board was not quite flat on the floor. There was a bit of a rock to it. There was some high points in it. So I built this router jig. It was important I needed to do this um, going forward anyway so I can make larger chopping boards and flatten them off. So I got this out, flattened it all off and made it look nice. Uh, I'll put a link to this at the end of this video if you're interested in seeing how I built this router jig. Lots of sanding now, um, obviously this is the sort of final stages. The uh, router jig, uh, I don't very have a very big um, router bit or a plunge bit, I need to get a bigger piece. Um, so there was quite a bit to sand down once I'd finished, but um, I think 40 grit kind of makes fairly quick work of it. Then it was just a matter of routing the uh, edges, made, giving them a nice little round over. And this is just a small jig that allows me to put handles on each end. I prefer putting these type of handles in because you can get your fingers underneath the board quite easily. They look quite tidy as well. But just when you think it's safe to go back in the water, have a look. You'll see the jig just slightly move here. There. Here it is in slow-mo, there. And that's the result. I've now got a Mickey Mouse ears for a handle. Look at that, great. Okay, it's not a big deal. I just have to make the handles a little bit bigger than my jig. Um, it's a bit of a pain because you've kind of got to route a bit out, move a jig about, route a bit out, move a jig about, because uh, I don't have a jig bigger than that jig to just make a bigger 
handle. But anyway, I did it. I got through that bit. Slightly larger handles on this. It's slightly thinner than I originally anticipated. <laughs> this thing's practically the size of a placemat now for my co cup of coffee. Um, but no, it's not too bad. Finally, sanded it down, finished sanded it down, and now it's time for its mineral bath. Mineral oil. In it goes. I need to get some more mineral oil. Look, it doesn't even cover the board anymore. Yeah, look at that. I love the panga panga. It's kind of green, actually. It looks more green than uh, in this picture, at least, anyway. In this uh, part of the video, sorry. Also, the uh, rosewood turned out absolutely gorgeous. Can see myself uh, using this way more going forward. You can see it on the sides there. It's got a beautiful grain to it. The panga panga turned out sort of did turn out chocolate brown kind of colour and this is end grain so it'll be a bit darker on the end grain than it would on the edge grain or face grain. Um, this is it compared to my previous chopping board so yeah you can see it's a bit smaller but still great patterns. Pleased how it ended up coming out and it's going to be a great Christmas present for somebody. So guys thanks for watching again and uh, I hope to see you in the next video. Please subscribe if you haven't already and you want to see more content like this and hit the like button if you like this video. It helps the algorithms uh, notice my videos. So thanks a lot guys and I'll see you soon.